Uh, welcome to the show, Food for Life, and this is your host, Dr. Saxena. And uh, as usual, uh, I'll start uh, what exactly I was trying to work for all these years and uh, why I am doing uh, something called integrative functional medicine. Uh, there are there are some things which uh, propelled me. Uh, to get into this particular do, uh, domain the f- very first thing what I was working on was uh, something called autism which was uh, I started working for uh, I, I was not aware what was autism in spite of my uh, medical uh, in my uh, curriculum and all that whatever I could understand I w- used to think that autism yes it is something related with the uh, hearing loss or some speech delay something like that but uh, I can tell you uh, uh, it is basically my work with autism I started working into all these domains now I'm working with law uh, I my clinic is full with cancer patients all autoimmune conditions including um, I can tell you the little kind of stuff like uh, SLE and uh, things which have been totally told yeah nothing can be done for them we try to to work on these particular things and uh, our emphasis is only on the natural uh, trying to work with the integrative modalities Uh, we'll start with the series this uh, thing of autism and uh, I want you people to understand what is basically this word called autism spectrum disorder Uh, it's a group of diseases characterized by a delay in speech um, uh, lang- speech and delay uh, language development is delayed uh, if they may have speech but sometimes that speech is not very structured uh, they may be something like they are uh, they ta- repeat whatever they say and uh, there is an impairment in the social uh, kind of interaction that's the most important thing and the use of restrictive and stereotype behavior patterns if the child is moving around he'll be continuously moving around so I have uh, it was uh, when I um, started working in this uh, domain of autism in the year 2000 it was difficult for me to explain to the other people uh, the other doctors what exactly is this term autism now every one of you had seen what is a child with autism looks like big big stuffs this was first described in 1944 by uh, see this is all the history but somewhere uh, what we need to uh, we are trying to look into is it was a very rare illness when uh, in 1944 which was wow, in fact Canada described in 1942 but whatever is it it was one uh, less than five in ten thousand people used to get it. I may be wrong. It's not just ten thousand. It may be quite uh, l- less than one in one lakh, one, something like that. So, but what over the last twenty-five years or so, we have been seen an explosive growth, uh, which was uh, uh, it. It doesn't fit into uh, that kind of stuff. We tell, okay, this is a genetic problem and all that. So uh, somewhere I don't want to get into that particular thing, but I can tell you the kind of uh, statistics, the kind of uh, incidence level, kind of sticks is frightening. It is it is uh, something on the line. It is something uh, quite quite very high. And uh, so what um, uh, people like us try to work on this particular thing, and uh, we are. Uh, yes i do uh, work on this uh, modality i had worked for last uh, two decades on this particular thing and i just want to give you a, some insight what exactly is this because unless you people i i know a lot of higher uh, uh, socioeconomic people with intellectuals uh, you have got high iq levels who had uh, done uh, a fabulous thing uh, i'm talking about indians here i'm talking about not just indians i'm talking about general uh, it's a global uh, thing but people who are achievers 
uh, in the the second generation and their children who had got something like autism something like adhd something like learning disability this is one thing which was always uh, we are not able to understand that particular stuff uh, so i will be discussing something about we believe this uh, autism is caused by a child with appropriate uh, genetic susceptibility is exposed to number of environmental insults uh, uh, this is uh, the thing as such environmental insults uh, resulting in a complex series of interactions in several body systems primarily the brain the gi tract gastrointestinal tract which is called the gut we call it as a second gut and uh, and the third one is your body defense which is the immunological system so there is a kind of uh, something which is happening very fast there is a chronic inflammatory response which has happened in this autistic kids they are always on the word go so this is what i just want to uh, i can always uh, it is not a just a brain disorder it is not just a psychiatric problem uh, somebody tells it is a neuro psychiatric problem and uh, just rubs up our, uh, and uh, most of the in uh, mainstream people they are taking this as a psychiatric problem just a kind of okay there is some problem with the behavior kind of stuff yes the uh, uh, the parents are not giving enough time and all that so this uh, this subject this autistic kid is being advised to go for applied behavior analysis is asked to go for a speech therapy and all that but the basic problem is not just the brain it is the gut as well as the immune system all these three things has to be worked on an integrated approach then the uh, you you get the things uh, you start getting back the kid uh the treatments are whatever have been there's a quite uh, time consuming it's very expensive also it requires a dramatic change in the lifestyle uh, uh, see but i can always tell you once you are on that path and you start looking into this you can always um, uh, this is a the the when you see the results what your child is um, get uh, getting that kind of simple simple small small uh, things you'll be you it it you'll definitely pursue all these things what i just want to share with you uh, so uh, not not going into much detail about uh, what exactly this genetic susceptibility and environmental insults and all that um, i can uh, i can always uh, tell you uh, there is a thing called uh, Uh, environmental cells you have got something like genetic pro predispositions uh, people having metallothionine dysfunction which is uh, which is basically tries to keep all your uh, harmful uh, uh, heavy metals or uh, this try metallothionine is a good guy which tries to mop up all this heavy metals and all that and if you don't have metallothionine in a proper way uh, you are into a problem Uh, so this is one of the uh, things i would like to uh, continue further so coming back to that particular thing which uh, we have been talking about this understanding autism uh, i can always tell you understanding autism is one big uh, thing which uh, i really uh, it has changed the way i start look, looking into things uh, it was it was not a uh, as simple uh, this one which is normally dubbed as the it's a behavioral problem or something like that i can tell you all the uh, apart from this immune system we have got a gi system we have got a endocrine system we have got brain also uh, so, uh, see these are all the things are interlinked in, in this particular uh, problem uh when i talk about uh, uh, this one i can always go on and on but i would like to give you a, some uh, simple food for thoughts where we can uh, understand what exactly this environmental insults are like uh, 
Uh, see, uh, I believe uh, all these environmental incidents are playing a role in the rising incidence of autism. Uh, it's important to note that it is unlikely that any of these factors cause autism in isolation. So there are one and multiple factors are involved and I believe that it is a combination of these factors and probably many others that is creating a toxic overload in these children who have abnormal metabolism probably based on their genetic makeup. The worse their genetics, the fewer ins in environmental insults it will take to induce the abnormalities and the severity of the defects, deficits will likely to be worse and evident at an earlier age. Uh, I would like to talk about something about uh, regressive forms of autism where the children seems to be regress after a period of normal development. This regressive autism is rising at a much higher rate than the classic form of autism which was described which is normally evident at birth. Um, this makes sense to me like because uh, so the rise in environmental exposure is starting the autism cascade uh, where 20 years ago they may have avoided it so it's all it is something which environmental insults the first thing environmental insult which comes to my mind is the mercury toxicity I'm talking about something like uh, I read a paper which uh, was in April 2000 maybe and it was Sally Bernard uh, paper as said suggesting autism is a severe form of mercury poisoning meticulously he meticulously they compared the signs and symptoms of mercury poisoning with the autism and found that there was a striking similarity in almost every aspect the uh, it's it's a kind of stuff we now we understand what is acrodynia what is pink's disease uh, which pink's disease happened because of the teething powders people used to use mercury in the, in the teething powder that resulted in pink's disease there is a thing called mad hatter's uh, disease which was an occupational exposure uh, to mercury and it was a minamata's disease which was the main kind of when we talk about environmental disasters the first thing comes to our mind is Minamata's disease that was a disaster to the consumption of the contaminated fish and the fish which were in highly intoxicated mercury that was the Minamata's disease so what exactly we are trying to work it out yes I do believe mercury has shown to be have many harmful effects it binds to some self sulfidyl groups on many proteins results in a decrease enzyme function and loss of structural integrity this may be the contributing this may be contributing to or be the cause of a leaky gut by damaging the intestinal a wall intestinal lining gets damaged you have something like leaky gut Mercury can impair the has in, in fact it impairs the cell mediated uh, immunity resulting in decreased ability to clear the viral and yeast infections. Mercury induces autoimmunity that is the body attacks itself resulting in the production of anti brain antibodies. We, have, we do get some myelin based protein antibodies and all that. Mercury it can cause or it can worsen the zinc deficiency and inactivate DPP4, which is an enzyme that breaks down milk and wheat proteins. Mercury alters the brain ability to clear unwanted brain cells or neurons alters the brain ability to clear this particular apoptosis a process that is normal and integral part of the brain development 
So normally the apoptosis doesn't occur. There is no cell uh, neural pruning doesn't happen. Children with born with a big head. Again, if I can talk about mercury, it's going to take all day. <laughs> mercury reduces the glutathione production. It depletes the intracellular glutathione. Uh, the clinical effect of uh, on the CNS include impaired motor planning, decreased facial recognition, blurred vision, constricted visual fields, insomnia, irritability, got a lot of kind of stuff which have been associated with autism or with the ADHD decade, difficulty verbalizing, altered taste, impaired short term memory, anxiety, social withdrawal, you have got tantrums, you have got hyper excitability, difficulty with concentration. So these are all the areas this by this way it's most most toxic to the infants and the males. So depleting glutathione itself has a big kind of thing because glutathione is a uh, it's it's a, such a buffer produced in the human body and if you have got good glutathione levels you're not getting into some problems. So our question is how these kids are being poisoned with the mercury. Mercury is not is common. It's not uncommon in our environment. We take fish in the diet. We have dental amalgams in the mouth. Oh, uh, the, uh, by far, uh, somewhere there is a kind of thing. But, but I can always tell you, the vaccinations also uh, is a big uh, source of mercury in these kids. So I just want to uh, switch on from this particular thing. I can go on and on. Only thing is, I just wanted to tell you what are the inserts environmental inserts which can result uh, the other environmental insert i have told you about mercury uh, the other environment insert which i i look into that is heavy viral antigen loading very high viral antigen loading it's because of something like enterocolitis which is uh, normally studied by someone inflammatory bowel disease was seen in all the skates and uh, when you did a scopy uh, you did find there is a lot of uh, degree of lymph node hypoplasia and uh, mucosa of the EM also was thickened uh, on biopsies was noted that these nodules were full of vaccine strains, measles virus, and uh, somehow with that basis, we believe uh, MMR could have uh, triggered this particular epidemic of autism. And uh, whatever is it, it is still on a kind of thing. And uh, I certainly believe there has to be a some uh, without uh, when there is a smoke, there has to be a fire. Without fire, there can't be a smoke. So, the third one environmental insert which I certainly try to work it is an antibiotic over usage. Uh, the uh, over prescription of antibiotics is a problem and not isolated to autism. Uh, it has resulted in a big way try to work on uh, see uh, all this uh, when we talk about all this antibiotic resistant organisms and uh, people autistic children usually have the problem with their low uh, lymphocyte activity so whenever they are subject with the broad spectrum antibiotic uh, they they uh, so there is a kind of uh, uh, repercussions which are known to happen and uh, this is one of the things which I may, I can always talk about is excessive usage of this antibiotics they try to totally the bacterial flora the what, what we call it is a microbiome is totally lost 
the microbiome is absolutely the gut becomes sterile because of this antibiotics and all that over that you get something like fungal infections and all that so what happens is that there is a big uh, room for uh, this particular uh, this microbiome and uh, this microbiome which when it gets altered it is bound to cause a problems as such because we certainly believe uh, small bowel is a second gut and uh, yes uh, when I talk about small bowel as a second gut I mean it and uh, the first thing I start treating with any, any autistic kid is trying to stabilize this bowel uh, if I am able to provide a diet diet which is absolutely having uh, no milk no wheat uh, no sugar no no kind of soya no we try to avoid a lot of stuffs uh, no sugar is a major thing no sugar no milk and milk is basically we can always look at the I'm talking about the cow's milk and buffalo milk you can always go to the camel milk but camel milk also I'm quite uh, not very uh, clear here because the people they do get into allergic issues a lot with that so just by trying to work on this particular modality is trying to see that the gut is healed I look for the healing of the gut once the, once the get, gut gets healed what is some kid these starts improving like anything this is the first very very essential step when I work with any autistic kid, they need to comply with the diet and all that, and we we, we are we are there to work on the all the other things, trying to re-establish the microbiome. Once the microbiome starts working, and we can always do a lot of wonders. People, uh, this child starts getting into remission I can say he will not be having the tantrums and all that so during that time you try to work with some other modalities the kind of stuff that makes a difference thank you